Hey guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Today, I have brought to you another video of daily current affairs that can be of use for your upcoming NABAT, RBI and SEBI examination. So let's quickly begin this video without discussing anything else or without causing any delay. But before that, guys, if you haven't subscribed our channel, then you can subscribe the channel and you can also join the telegram channel the benefit of joining the telegram channel is that you will get the pdf of this session on the telegram channel after this session okay so if you want the pdf then do join the channel of telegram and you can subscribe our channel as well so here is our first question with which country has india partnered for setting up center of excellence on offshore wind first of all the very first thing what is offshore wind so offshore wind is basically the offshore wind power projects that are set up inside the water bodies like sea or rivers or oceans. Okay. So those are called the offshore wind power plants. Now this center for excellence on offshore wind has been set up in partnership with Denmark. Okay. Now the purpose is to master or increase the contribution of offshore wind energy in the total energy mix of India. That is why this center of excellence has been established by India and Denmark under the strategic green partnership or green strategic partnership. Now this is not a very old partnership set up between India and Denmark. Recently, this partnership has been set up. So in which year was this partnership set up between India and Denmark? This is your question to answer in the comment section. Below. Moving on to this news. So India has a target of adding 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy projects by 2030. The partners or the organizations that are actually collaborating in this center of excellence are the ministry of new and renewable energy and denmark's ministry of climate energy and utilities guys do remember this target this is the target and very important from exam point of view now this center of excellence will have four working groups which will handle the entire work of this center of excellence so you have working group on spatial planning, you have working group on financial framework conditions, supply chain infrastructure, standards and testing. So this one will undertake the work related to the space, not the space that we consider the space in terms of area. Okay, so it will undertake activities related to space acquisition for setting up the these wind offshore wind energy power projects. Okay. Actually, the major work of this working group would be to check the feasibility of the area of the identified area for setting up the wind energy power plant because offshore wind and wind power plants are those plants only that are set up inside the water bodies and water bodies are the uh, are the uh, properties of the government of India. Next comes the financial framework condition so if you want to set up the wind energy power project then you need finances so this working group will undertake the activities related to the finances this will undertake the activity related to the entire infrastructure and this will check whether the work on the power project is being done under the international standards or not so these are the working groups now this is the vision of this center of excellence that it wants to transform into the international center for offshore wind energy and recently the minister of new and renewable energy rk singh has announced that india has already attained this much of renewable energy capacity now you should know that our target is 175 gigawatts by 2022 so in light of this statement this target is not far-fetched anymore we can easily achieve this target by 2022 next is that india has also reduced emissions by 28 percent in comparison to 2005 level 
okay against the target of 35% by 2030 so this was set under the paris agreement there were other ndcs as well nationally determined contributions that we have already discussed so i'm not going to repeat it but your responsibility is to know all of them okay so cover paris agreement thoroughly next question is who heads the panel formed for drafting the new drugs cosmetics and medical devices bill so it is vg somani the present drug controller uh, general of india okay so this bill is to be drafted by november 30 2021 so this is the deadline for this committee to draft this entire bill at present the drugs and cosmetics act of 1940 regulates the import manufacture distribution sale of drugs cosmetics and medical devices which of the following witnessed the highest msp increase in the rabi marketing season of 2022 to 2023 so the right answer is lentil and in lentil also it is masoor now guys the cabinet committee on economic affairs has increased has approved the increase in msp for the upcoming rabi marketing season of 2022 to 2023 in the union budget of 2018 to 19 the government announced that we will increase msps to 1.5 times of the average cost of production pan india okay so in light of this statement that was made in the union budget of 2018 to 19 the msps are being increased by the government of india every year since this 2018 to 19 period now guys this is the table this is the price list for 2021 to 2022 in rupees per quintal this is the price list for 2022 to 2023 and this is the increase in msp in comparison to the current prices okay so you can see here the highest increase has been witnessed by lentil masoor and rap seed and mustard okay now the return over cost what does this mean how much the farmers are able to recover their cost so it is in percentage term and the highest is in wheat and rap seed and mustard then you have all of these other crops in the rabi marketing season so that's all in relation to the rabi crops for marketing season now here in this statement i deliberately skipped this statement because i have already discussed in the table itself there the cost of production are estimated the expected returns to farmer over their cost of production are estimated to be highest in wheat and rap seed and mustard 100% each so we have discussed it then lentil at 79% gram at 74% barley at 60% safflower at 50% as you can see here okay moving on to the next question with which iit has the indian institute of astrophysics jointly developed the growth india telescope so the right answer is iit bombay this telescope was launched in 2018 only in hangle ladakh guys if you remember there was an engineer from this place only who has been appointed Uh, as the honorary member of international astronomical union and he became the first indian to be appointed as the honorary member of iau name that person in the comment section below okay moving on to this news so basically right now this is in the news because iit bombay and this indian institute of astrophysics both of them have signed an mou so that they can continue to work on this uh, growth india telescope okay now this we have already discussed and this point is important that dst science and engineering research board and indo us science and technology platform both of them are supporting this telescope related to this telescope the main point here is that this is the first fully robotic optical telescope and one of the few such facilities that are located outside europe and us okay so that is the speciality of this growth india telescope recently 
two students of IIT Bombay have discovered an asteroid that flew past very near to Earth without impacting Earth in any sense. So that was that asteroid was discovered by IIT students by using this telescope only. Okay. So this is showing how the IIT Bombay students are able to do research by using this telescope. The next is that the Indian Institute of Astrophysics is the nodal center for this 30 meter telescope. Basically, this is the nodal center for India's representation. It is representing India in this consortium, which is in Hawaii. Next is that this IIA is also developing this equipment for Aditya L1 mission, which is India's first solar mission to be launched in 2022. With which country has India signed an MOU for cooperation in the field of geosciences? It is with Russia. Now, one of the areas of cooperation also includes developing India Geoscience Data Repository with the Russian technology. So, this is important from exam point of view and this is the unique point of this MOU. Who among the following is appointed as a chairman of Assembly of Asian Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions? The right answer is Controller and Auditor General of India, G.C. Murmu. So, he was appointed at the 15th Assembly of this organization. Basically, he has been appointed for a three-year term from 2024 to 2027. And India will host the 16th Assembly of this organization in 2024 when he will take over the chairmanship of this organization. Now he was selected at the 15th assembly that we have already discussed. These are the facts related to this organization. Beijing, China is the headquarters. This is the most important fact. Do remember. Recently, Hyderabad based International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics has been awarded the African Food Prize 2021. The award was given at the Africa Forum for Green Revolution Summit. Where did the summit take place? So it took place in Nairobi, Kenya. And this Indian institution got the award for its tropical legumes project because this project has ensured food security in 13 countries in the sub-Saharan Africa. That's why this organization got the Africa Food Prize. So guys, that was all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching the video.